Amen and amen. Thank you, Jody. Near to the heart of God. That's where we all want to be. It's where we all need to be. Amen? Amen. So I want to invite you, before we open up God's word today in a message I've entitled, God's Special Delivery, just pray with me and pray for me as we draw near to that heart of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know you long for us to draw near to you. But Father, we have not the power nor the wherewithal to do so. So we ask that you now, Father, draw us near into your presence. And humble me, Lord, and hide me and lay me low. So it is just Jesus and his words and his presence and his might and his love that is shown forth in this place to touch us today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. God's special delivery. You know, um, I read a part of this book, and I think it was entitled People's Fuel. And I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it was entitled People's Fuel. And it served as the inspiration for today's message. And it talks a lot about just relationships. Relationships. Not just our relationship with God, but our relationship with one another. And how that is intertwined with our relationship with God. You know, in fact, as I studied scripture over the years and as I started to, to learn about who Jesus really was. Now, remember, I was born and raised in this faith. But I didn't really know who Jesus was until later in my life. Because it wasn't until I grew a relationship with Jesus that I began to truly know him. I knew of him. I knew things about him. In fact, I could even defend the fact that he existed. But I didn't really know him until I had a relationship with him. And you know, the thing is, what I didn't really grasp a hold of, what I didn't really understand was that knowledge of Jesus in my life actually started through a relationship with others. Others who had discovered Jesus for themselves. Others who had a relationship with Jesus brought me into relationship with them, which then connected me in relationship with Jesus. And how often do we fail in sharing that relationship with others to connect them with Jesus? Talking about God's special delivery today. You know, we're talking about God's special delivery service. And it's not just him, and it's not just the Holy Spirit, and it's not just those angels. It's you and me. We are the most powerful postal service that exists. Not the USPS, not FedEx, not UPS. It is you and me, the most powerful delivery service that exists in this universe because it is powered by Jesus Christ. God's special delivery. You know, just as we walk through life, all of us, from young to old, all of us experience the challenges and demands that this life puts upon us. It might be the demands or the challenges of a friendship, of a marriage, of parenting. Come on, parents. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. It might be the challenges or, or demands of your career, of your dating relationships, of all the different things in this world. There are demands placed upon us no matter how young or how old we are. It is just the way of life. And the only way we can get through those challenges in life is if we find the energy and the power to make it through those challenges. Positively, 
in an encouraging and healthy way. And who is that source of that power to make it through those challenges, to make it through the demands of life? It is God. Amen? Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. We all know this verse so very well. God is the source of all that strength. Philippians 4, 19 says, And my God, and my who? God. My God will meet what? All, all your what? Needs. needs. My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. That is scripture. And we know, in fact, some of you have experienced this. You know, you have felt the power of God. You, you have felt his presence. You have felt him reach down from heaven and touch you. And you have felt empowered, emboldened, enlightened in a supernatural and miraculous way. That is how God supplies those needs in a vertical manner. And it comes through prayer. It comes through what? Prayer. prayer. It comes from Bible study. It comes from what? Bible what? So, so it's not just a Bible perusal, right? It's not just, just a Bible reading. It is a Bible study. And listen, folks, I am guilty, just like I'm sure many of you out here are as well, that sometimes at the end of a long day, you are already in bed, but you know you haven't done your Bible study to end the night. And the best you do is you grab that phone and you just read a verse or two of scripture and you're like, got my quota in, Lord. Forgive me, but I'm going to catch up in the morning. Oh, Lord, help us. If we need his power, if he is the source of our energy just to make it through a day in this struggle we call life, we need Bible study. Bible study. And we get power from the Holy Spirit, a divine touch of the Spirit. And it all happens through surrender, surrendering our will to God. That is the vertical. That is him empowering you, fueling you vertically, top down, directly from heaven down to you. And you know, there are moments Maybe you've experienced it as well. And my prayer is I experience these moments more often, Lord, help me to be available to you. There are moments in my life that I can think back, that I remember through prayer and study and surrender, I have felt the hand of God literally touching me where it feels like, man, I am on my knees in prayer and there is just this, this strike of lightning coming down from heaven. And man, I feel like a Superman Christian. Now I'm ready to go out and conquer the world. My missionaries from Cuba might have felt that same thing. Because when you go, it has happened on those mission trips. And that is why I encourage everybody out here. If you have never had the opportunity to experience mission work for yourselves, I highly encourage you. Listen, I know there's a lot of logical reasons to not go saying, well, look, I can send my money and it'll go farther out there. They can do more with this. And hey, can't the local folks do even more than some stranger coming over there? Listen, it's not just for their benefit. It's for yours. It is to transform your life. It is to empower you. It is for you to taste the power from God that I can almost guarantee you, if you have not gone, you have not tasted and it will light you on fire in such a way when you come back home, you will light a fire in everyone else around you. And in those moments, especially in those moments, when I get to that place in those seasons of earnest and deep fasting and prayer and study and surrender, man, I have felt like I have come out my knees and I feel like Clark Kent busting out my shirt and there is just a big J for Jesus on my chest. And I feel like a superhero for him. That is the vertical touch empowering of God. Supplying all your needs. 
But you know, the thing is, Scripture says that is not the only way he supplies his grace. Because he does it through the horizontal as well. And that is from you and from me. You know, in, in these so many scriptures, over and over and over again, it talks about this. How people, through their love, through their support, through their guidance, through their wisdom and their counsel, share the grace of Jesus Christ. No less so. No less so. For they, you and I, are used as the hands of God to impart that grace to another. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 38. I want to show some of these scriptures just in case you don't see just how clearly God makes it that he spreads his grace through us. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And the Bible says this. This is before sin enters the world, folks. This is in perfection and beauty of holiness. God says it is not good for the man to be alone. I mean, just think about that. In a perfect world where man would walk and talk with God directly, God says, it is not good for man to be alone. He needs a horizontal. He was not just designed for the vertical. He also needs the horizontal. He needs relationships. It is not just marriage we're talking about here. Relationships of love through friends, through family, from any loved one. It is not good for man to be alone because just like a husband or a wife, every single person needs a true relationship to flourish in Jesus. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 10. The words of the wisest man who had ever walked this earth. Solomon says this. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. He's not talking about God here. He's talking about friendships, relationships. Pity anyone who has no one to help them. Now let's talk about the words of Jesus himself. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 38. The red letter words of Jesus himself. And I want you to picture where this scene takes place. In the garden, just moments anticipating his torture, his beating, his crucifixion, and his death. In his hour, in his moment of his greatest need, Jesus says this. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 38, Then he, Jesus, said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And he turns to Peter, James, and John, and he says, Stay here and keep watch with me. Jesus Christ himself. He who had a connection with the Father such as no one else who walked the face of this earth had. He asked for his friends to stay with him. If Jesus needed his friends, how much more so do we? How much more so do your friends need you to be Jesus for them? Too many times I have found Christians who live what they term a solo life with Jesus. Well, you know, I'm not really social, you know, uh, I'm not really one for church, and 
you know, I don't really, uh, uh, it's not easy for me to, to, to connect with people and things like that. Listen, just because something doesn't come naturally to us doesn't make it okay. Sin comes naturally to us, amen? Don't make it okay, folks. We all got weaknesses. Jesus designed us for relationships. And he designed you to be in relationship with someone else. It's not enough for you to be on your own and say, I'm good with God. That's not good enough for God. Because he told you it is not good for you to be alone. Even Jesus himself said, stay here and keep watch with me. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 6. Paul, Paul, who had been through just about everything you could imagine that you could suffer to serve Jesus, he says this, but God who comforts the downcast, he says God who comforts the downcast comforted us he does not say by giving me a scripture from the Bible. He does not say by visiting me with the Holy Spirit. He does not say by performing a miracle in my presence. He says he comforted us by the coming of Titus. Who in your circle should be saying, God comforted me by the coming of Ray? By the coming of Micaiah, by the coming of Jerry, by the coming of Rayon, by the coming of Neil. God did not comfort me by some word of scripture. He did not comfort me by speaking to me in prayer. He comforted me by a phone call. By my friend. In my time of need. Ebony was grace to me. Margaret was grace to me. It's scripture, folks. Who are you grace to today? Who is God calling you today to be his special delivery? We've read this scripture just now so eloquently, my son put it. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. He cannot say it any clearer than this. He says, each of you, each of who? Each of you, each of us, me. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace, of God's what? Who is the steward of God's grace? We are the faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. We are the stewards of God's grace. Don't wait for God to spell it out to somebody else. Don't wait for a miracle to happen. Don't wait for an anointed touching of the Holy Spirit. You are the delivery service that God has anointed and selected to provide his grace to his seeking people. And if you aren't, then the question is why? Is it because God has said, that's okay, you're off duty? Or is it because your relationship with him is not right today? Now the question is, how do we go about sharing that grace? You know, relationships are difficult. Relationships are tricky. Even in a God-fearing, loving marriage, in a God-fearing, loving friendship, Relationships are still tricky. Husband and wives know what I'm talking about. Fiancés know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Boyfriends and girlfriends, friends know what I'm talking about. This touches all of us. Relationships can be tricky. 
And sometimes you can have a desire to share God's grace, but unless you know how, you could end up doing more harm than good. Guilty as charged. Brother Ray knows what I'm talking about. I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hand. <laughs> not even going to ask you to raise your hand. You know, in my zeal to share new truths that I was excited to find out about, in my zeal to share that with someone else, I ended up hurting my relationship with them and their relationship with God. Because I was sharing the wrong thing at the wrong time. You know, things about, the thing about deliveries is FedEx needs to know what to deliver to the right house on what date. Amen? Because if they go to the wrong place, ain't going to do anybody any good. If they bring the wrong package, you don't say, praise God, amen. And if they came on the wrong day, there's no one to receive it. So there are really four types of deliveries that, that can be given. In fact, I, I wrote these as nutrients because, because every, 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 every delivery truck needs fuel to reach its destination. Just like our bodies need fuel. And you know, I, I'm working on my diet. And, and, and uh, how many here take multivitamins in the morning? Anybody take vitamins in the morning? That's okay, don't be shy, don't be shy. Um, some of you are aware, you know, of, because uh, uh, a number of people, I see faces over here, you guys sell these, these multivitamins called Juice Plus. If you don't know about them, you can talk to my mom. She's a big believer in this, this Juice Plus, and they say something like, it's like 10 fruits and vegetables in one little pill. So if you don't have time to eat 10 fruits and vegetables, and I ain't got time to eat no 10 fruits and vegetables, take this one pill. And so when she told me to try and she said, it's on me, I said, well, listen, if it's on you, mom, I thought I was taking one pill. What I didn't know, you know, like I had to take eight pills every morning. I got like, I got my garden variety, I got my vineyard variety, I got my fruit variety, and then I got my omega 3, 5, 10, 43, hut, hut, hike, whatever. I take eight pills every morning. I'm telling you, I feel like, you know, I'm in a hospital. But the thing is, you need the right nutrients in your body, right? It's fuel for your body, right? Like, and you know, forgive me, because I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, hey, we, we got somebody here. Lena, Lena can correct me if I'm wrong. She's a nutrition. If your bones don't get enough calcium, right, what happens? They brittle, right? You don't get enough iron in your blood. What do you get? You get anemic, exactly, right? Listen, we need to feel. Feed the right nutrients at the right time. Otherwise, we get too much of something at the wrong time too. Too much iron, too much calcium, too much of juice plus. Sorry, mom. It's going to do more harm than good, right? So what are those four things? Nutrient number one, nutrient number one. We have to be present. Nutrient number one, Rayon. Nutrient number one. <laughs> we have to be present. Rayon is working on it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he will find, Rayon needs more nutrients because he's got vision problems. So, so you tell him whatever nutrients he needs for a better eyesight. <laughs> Nutrient number one, we need to be present. How do you share the grace of God? It is by just being present. I call it the ministry of presence. Elder Ray here is a mortician, for those of you who don't know. So if you pass away, make sure you touch base with him just before you go down. But when I was serving as an elder with Ray at, at Seabrook, I remember I invited him to, to, to share with the elder board on how to help in times of bereavement. You know, because I will tell you personally, like, you know, when you go to a family who, are, who, who have just lost a loved one, 
I never have the words to say. I have no idea. What do you say in a moment like that? And Elder Ray said this, you just need to be present. Just be there. Be a presence of compassion and love. You don't even have to say a word. Be present. How do you share the grace of God? How do you deliver it? There are times, folks, where a person in need, they don't need a Bible study. They don't need scripture. You know, when you go to visit someone who's just lost a loved one, and they're talking about, hey, I know at least they're looking down on me from heaven right now by the side of Jesus. Now is not the time to say, well, actually, they're not. They're actually resting in the grave, but one day soon, you will see, no, man, now's not the time. Be present. Let them know they are loved. Be present. The right nutrients at the right time is the right fuel to bring that delivery of grace. Be present. And let me tell you, for you know, some of you guys might be like me. You guys are taskmasters. Y'all got everything on a list, just like me. Someone opens up my phone, they're going to see 30 items, bang, bang, bang. Oh, you got an issue? Here's how we're going to resolve it. Problem solving, one, two, three. And it really took work on me to understand the ministry of presence. Shut your mouth, turn off your mind, and open up your heart. Be present to share the grace of God. Nutrient number two, nutrient number two, convey the good. Convey the good. What am I talking about by conveying the good? So many times you're going to come across somebody who is living in discouragement and depression because they, this life has pounded them down from their parent to their spouse to their boss, everyone has made them feel worthless and pitiful. And what they need is a word from you to encourage the goodness in them, to uplift them, to show them that they are formed in the image of God. That no matter what their weakness, no matter what their challenges, no matter what their struggle, they have Jesus' image in them, and you need to bring that out so that they can feel positive about themselves and to know that someone else sees the good in them. Somebody here knows what I'm talking about. Because somebody here, somebody watching online, you have known in your moments of trial, in those darkest moments of your life, you needed somebody to let you know that they love you and that they value you, that you are empowered by the grace of God. Nutrient number two, that fuel number two, convey the good, encourage with positivity. I promise you, no matter what anybody's situation is, they could be a drug addict who has relapsed time and time and time again. I promise you this, by the grace of God, he will show you what to find positive in their life to lift them up and remind them they are the sons and daughters of God. Amen. Convey the good in them. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 24, talking about those gracious words. Proverbs chapter 16 says this, gracious words are a honeycomb, Amen. sweet to the soul and healing to the bone. Find those gracious words in that moment for someone today. 
Nutrient number three. Nutrient number three, provide reality. Provide reality. You know, sometimes, folks, that person actually doesn't just need someone to be present with them. Sometimes they don't need someone to uplift and encourage them. Sometimes they are in a valley of decision and they need clarity of truth, which is through the grace of God. That is when you may open up the word of God unto them, when they need that clear and present truth from Jesus. Convey that truth, but speak truth in love. In what? Love. In love. Let me tell you something. Early in my ministry, early in my relationship with Jesus, I have been guilty of taking this Bible and pounding it like a hammer on someone's head as if they were nailed, saying, you need the truth. Here it comes. Here's the Sabbath. Here's the state of the dead. Here's what happens with hell. Here's all this truth. Uh -huh. And the truth was they needed the truth, but I wasn't sharing it in love. In other words, they were searching for the truth. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. Us Adventists have so much truth, sometimes we just don't know what to do with it. Mercy. Huh? Somebody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Listen, man. I'm pastoring this church, and I got people telling me that, you know, I'm not sharing the truth because I'm talking about love. But I'm here to tell you, if you don't share that truth in love, then it's worthless. And if there is not a foundation of love in your relationship with them, no amount of truth will have any impact. We have been given this truth to make an impact on souls. And the impact only comes through a love relationship. Mm -hmm. Speak the truth in love. It's not always easy, folks. Sometimes we have some hard discussions. Sometimes we share things that we don't really want to share. But we have to speak the truth in love. And when it's given in love, it's received in love. Provide reality. Speak the truth in love. And finally, nutrient number four, call to action. Call to action. Nutrient number four, call to action. There is a time to be present. There is a time to convey the good. There is a time to speak the truth. But ultimately, there will be a time when they need to be called to action, to make a stand, to step out in their walk with Jesus. And you may be the one to call them to that action, to guide them in that path, to show them the steps but to call them to action. You want to know why at the end of every sermon you will ever hear me preach, even if it is in a home or in a church or wherever it may be here, why you will always hear me make an appeal? Because ultimately, somebody needs to make a response for a call to an action to accept and follow Jesus. And if you don't make that call, they will not have the opportunity you are the door. Yes. And by his grace, you will open that door at the right time and invite them into that relationship with Jesus. Yes. Call them to action. Advise them into their next steps. James chapter 1, verse 22 he says this, do not merely listen to the word. In other words, don't just come to church and listen to your Bible study teachers. Don't just come to the church and listen to the pastor. Don't just go home and listen to the Christian radio and Christian TV stations. 
Don't just listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. In other words, if you are just listening, you are deceiving yourself. He ain't talking to unbelievers here, folks. He says, don't just listen to the words. He's talking to believers. He's talking to Christians. He's talking to Adventists. He's talking to living water in this church and online. He's talking to us. Don't just listen to the words and deceive yourselves. Because if that's all you're doing, you are deceiving yourself. He says, do action. Do what it says. Call to action. What are our four nutrients? What are our four nutrients? Be present. Convey the good. Provide reality. And call to action. And folks, when our relationship with Jesus is in tune with his will, he will show us what to deliver to who at the right time. Because when somebody needs you to just be present, they don't need you to walk in there with a Bible study. But when somebody is ready for a call to action, you don't sit there and be silent. And I'm going to tell you, it has been a challenge in my life to know what, Lord, do you want me to do with this brother or with this sister at what time. But I'm here to tell you, by my witness, that the more you do so, the easier it becomes because God is training you to be his steward of grace. Yes. The first time you go out there, you're not going to know your delivery route. You're going to struggle on the road. You're going to be in your trunk wondering who gets what package and when. And it's okay, folks. Don't be discouraged. I was there. In fact, I'm still there. But the more you go on those calls, the more you drive that truck, the easier it becomes because the more familiar you become with that route, the more you know your steps, your path, your people, your deliveries to the point that you won't need that map anymore and you will know the person by name and just what they need delivered on that day. We are God's special delivery unit, an elite force powered by heaven. And the question for us today as I close, the question I have for us today, what are you delivering for God today? What are you delivering for God today? If God has called us to be his stewards of grace, what are you delivering today? Maybe somebody in this place today, maybe somebody watching online today needs that grace delivered to them. Maybe you find yourself in an hour, in a moment, in a trial of need. And you have been praying to God, asking for his grace and for his mercy, but have not yet received it. Maybe that is you. And today, today you are waiting for someone else in this place to be that delivery of grace. Open your hearts, open your minds, open your doors to your friends to your families and pray that God's grace will be delivered through their love. And folks today in this place and watching online, I challenge you today. I challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ today. If God is impressing on your heart today and he is telling you that you are not serving as my special delivery, but I have called you and I long to anoint you, to empower you to be my steward of grace, to deliver my grace more fully, more powerfully than this world has ever seen. 
if you will dare accept his call today, then I invite you to just stand to your feet and answer his call and open your hearts and minds so that he will show you, my brother, my sister, who to deliver his grace to today. If that's you, if you will accept his call. This is a challenge, folks, because it's not easy. But if you will accept that call, the Spirit is impressing on your heart today to be his special delivery that no one else can be. Just stand and feel his power and let him impress the name, the specific names he is inviting you to reach today. All heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. And as the Spirit moves in this place today, and as he sees those who have stood here today, who are answering that call, to be the stewards, to be the delivery of his grace today. Maybe there's somebody here today. Maybe there is somebody here today who is ready to answer the call of action to give their heart to Jesus for the very first time. Maybe today they have felt the Spirit and they have felt His grace on their life. And today, for the very first time, they want to give their life and they just want to say, Jesus, Jesus, I need you. And I don't know what to do, but my life is not right and I need it right in you. So today, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord, as my Savior. Take my hand, take my heart, take my life and do with it as you will today for the first time. Jesus, I accept you. If that's you and you're in this place and you have heard his spirit and for the first time you want to give your heart to him. I invite you to just raise your hand where you are now. Raise your hand high, because Jesus is reaching down to take your hand today. If you're watching us online, right where you are, go to our website, livingwatersda.org, click on the My Next Step link, and check that box to give your heart to Jesus today. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for your people. I stand with them today, Father. We have accepted your call. Let us be your conduits of grace today, Lord. We long to take this good news that Jesus lives, not just in heaven above, but in us today to prepare us for a life with you for eternity. Today, let us take that good news. Lord, impress in our hearts even now as I speak with the names of those you long for us to minister to. Let us share the right word at the right time through the love of Jesus. And today, Father, especially for those who have raised their hands today, today, those who have heard your Spirit's call, those who have said, Jesus, take my life, Father, reach down from heaven above and grab that hand and hold them to your heart and never, ever, ever let them go. Be real to them, Lord be tangible in their life and bring a joy and a peace and a power through the grace of God that no one will recognize them again for they will only see Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.